and we feel that's really our, our best bang for the dollar. We've been through a lot of tragedy. Hard hit for us was 9-11. We lost seven co-workers. That was very difficult, um, you know, personally and, and as an organization. But disaster knows no boundaries. Everybody in this room could or, or may have been impacted by a disaster. So it really doesn't matter where you live, how much money you make, you know, or who you know, uh, you can't prevent disasters. The Red Cross is there to help you know, clean up afterward. Um, we did recently travel out to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and went through Denver, and there was floods, so I'm thinking back on that, that track again. But, <laughs> but we are here today really to, to help raise some money for the Red Cross. And I know that, that Liz and Jared are going to be asking you to, you know, to grab your pens and, and envelopes, but you know, I'd like to have you, you know, be able to think about you know, a disaster that may have touched you personally. Uh, or someone you know, um, and really think about you know how you can help them. And the way we do it as an organization, last year was was Christy almost what, almost two million dollars um, that we gave. Uh, we did a, a, a give a dollar support at our stores that ran a day and a half, you know, almost two days on very short notice, uh, and picked up over a million dollars from our shoppers. Um, so people you know want to give and, and and help. So the Red Cross is is our vehicle to help do that. Thank you, Pat. As we mentioned, there is on your table, actually several of these on the table, it's an envelope and it's a pledge card. And I would love for you, if someone on your table can help pass those out to everybody at the table, I'd like you to take a look at that. And Jarrett, I know you would like to encourage people. You know, Liz, did you know that we had 250 people at our shelter in Plymouth uh, during those blizzards? We gave each one of those folks a blanket. It costs $1,000 to give all of those folks a blanket. $1,000 that you can help underwrite for this year's blizzard season. So we would think appreciate about it. you to a consider A blanket, them. a blanket. It makes such a huge difference. It's a meal, it's a blanket. Who knows what it could be? It could be your family that's next. How many of us were affected by the marathon bombings? How many people were affected in the Somerville arson attacks? How many people have been affected by the blizzards, the hurricanes, and those are just a few of the things that we've had to deal with this year alone. When a family is burned out of their home, a family of four, to give them blankets and clothes uh, and to put them up in a hotel overnight, it costs $1,100. But wait, that, ba that family has a baby. It's $130 for an emergency crib to support that family. For $1,230, you can support a family of four, including that baby, uh, who's lost their home to a fire. These are the sorts of things that your money goes directly to, Liz. And I also want to point out, if you notice on the back of the card, you can do Amex, Visa, MasterCard, and Discover. <laughs> I like frequent flyer miles, so, you know, you know there's, there's a twofer there for me. <laughs> one of the things that's hardest about a house fire is that people lose everything, including things of sentimental value. So you, your child loses their sweatshirt their favorite sweatshirt, and the smell of smoke, even if you recover it, you can't quite get it out. We had a, Lynn, uh, a fire in Lynn this year where 22 families were burned out, 22 kids who lost their clothes. When they got them back, we were able to recover those clothes, and with these wonderful smoke packs, for $240, we were able to provide smoke packs to every one of those families to get their clothes clean and get their lives back on track. That's money which your gift could help support. I've known people who've had their um, houses burned down or had huge fires in their homes. And what you were just talking about from some of the stories that I've, I've, I've had an opportunity to do with people, sadly, on, on such horrible circumstances. But you talked about the clothes. You talked about the smell of soot and smoke that gets embedded in the fabric of your clothes, gets embedded into your furniture. To be able to have that all cleaned out and feel like you're starting your life on a clean slate again, to think that the American Red Cross can help you with that is really extraordinary. You know, Paula Ferales, who we heard from earlier, went down to Superstorm Sandy. And when we suffer disasters, volunteers from other places come here. We had about 30 volunteers support us during the marathon response. Well, Paula, who spent her days feeding thousands of people through lower Manhattan and on Staten Island, it costs the Red Cross about $1,000 a week to feed and house and support Paula as she supports thousands and thousands of needy folks. Your gift of $1,000 
can help deploy a Red Cross volunteer to Colorado, to tornadoes in Oklahoma, to hurricanes in New York City, or wherever the Red Cross is needed. Sarah talked about the fact that you've increased, if I heard you correctly, your volunteer support by 180 percent right. from last year. That's an extraordinary number of volunteers. Now, I'm sure there are many of you in this room who maybe don't have the time to volunteer, so this is another way that you can support a volunteer if you can't be there yourself. We hope that you will all consider making a gift to the Red Cross today. Your money supports the work that we do, supports the volunteers from our neighborhoods, from our communities, who help make the Red Cross true to our promise to care and comfort those in need. We are going to have volunteers, volunteers as always, <laughs> come around and collect from those folks who've been able to fill out a card. If you can't fill it out today, we hope that you'll take it home and send it in. Your support means the world to us. We couldn't do it without you. And if you do if you do pledge today, don't forget about the drawing for the diamond earrings and all the other things that are going on today. So we're going to have the drawing at the end of the, uh, end of the uh, breakfast. But I'm going to give you just about 60 seconds or so to take a look at the card. If you can fill it out right now, we would greatly appreciate it. Our volunteers are going to be coming around. And you can just hold it up if you would like someone to pick it up for you. We'll be back in just a moment. A bit of business if you're filling out the card. You'll notice that there's a window in the envelope. So make sure that you're putting the address in the window. They want me to make sure you know that. You want the window in? The address in the window, right? Ah. Correction, correction, correction. We want to know how much you're giving in the window so we know for the drawing. <laughs> if you've already filled it out, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. But if you want to be in the drawing, put the amount in the window. Sorry about that. We'll just take another 30 seconds. We want to continue on with our program so that we can stay on schedule. If you would like to take the card with you or need to, a little more time in filling it out, you may drop it off on your way out or you can always mail it in. I'd like to, on behalf of Jarrett and Pat and all the volunteers who came up to speak to you, to say thank you for your generous support. And without further ado, shh, 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 thank you. I'd like to welcome to the stage the lovely Candy O'Terry from Magic 106.7. Candy? Oh, come on, you can do a little bit better than that. I feel like that was lame. Uh. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you because 
by accepting your invitation to be here this morning, I got to sleep in until about 5.30, which was so great. Normally, I get up at 3.30 in the morning, so this is really nice. I want to say thank you so much to the American Red Cross for asking me to join you today. I am Candy O'Terry on the radio, but I'm a mom. I am the mother of two children, including one Christopher William O'Terry, a newly minted Green Beret in the United States Army National Guard. Christopher received his Green Beret in January 2013 at Fort Bragg, and after the chaplain and his commander had put a Green Beret on each man's head, there were 76 men that day, he turned to the mothers and he asked us to bow our heads. And he said, the strength of a Green Beret comes from the love of his country and the support of his family. I thank each and every one of you for keeping our men and women deployed overseas, some in places they can't even talk about, embedded in places we can't even imagine. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for keeping each and every one of them in your prayers every night. So on behalf of my son and all the men and women deployed overseas, I would like to say thank you to those who have signed the Holiday Mail for Heroes cards in the lobby or perhaps at your table. The American Red Cross Holiday Mail for Heroes, supported by the ladies of the Tiffany Circle, collects and distributes welcome holiday cards to servicemen and to servicewomen and veterans across the country. It is one small way for us to show them that we care. I would also like to extend a personal welcome to all of the members of the Armed Forces, some of them in our audience today. Would you please join me in applauding them? Thank you. The American Red Cross serves and supports members of the military, veterans, and their families through its service to Armed Forces Programs, or SAF. SAF provides needed comfort and care in military and veterans hospitals. It provides support for military families with vital social services, and it also provides emergency communications. This is all to keep families connected, sharing information about births and deaths when military families need it the most. The Red Cross assists in person wherever it is needed, alongside the troops throughout the world on stateside military installations or in local communities or at a base. SAF at the Red Cross is a mixture of both tradition and innovation. We continually adapt our services and create new programs to meet the needs of today's military members, veterans, and their families. Our work is important to the nation because it is important to our troops and it is vital to their families. And speaking of military tradition, you are in for a treat. I would like to introduce to you a woman I am a huge fan of. She is a longtime friend of the Red Cross, and you will soon know her by name. She is Mrs. Joanne Patton. Do you recognize the last name? Joanne Holbrook Patton has tremendous experience with volunteerism and with the United States military. She is a fifth generation army daughter herself. Now she not only married the late General George S. Patton IV, but in doing so, George S. Patton Jr. became her father-in-law. Not one to remain idle as she moved from post to post with her husband, she became an active volunteer with both the Army and Community Service and the National Military Family Association. And who better to represent? Her outstanding work with these organizations led to appointments with the Department of the Army in Washington as its very first volunteer consultant for Army Community Service. And as a board member of the National Military Family Association and because of her longstanding efforts to promote education for military spouses, the National Military Family Association renamed its scholarship program in her honor in 2005. I need to book her for my Exceptional Women show. 
busy as she was with these military associations, Joanne became a staunch supporter of the American Red Cross, working very closely with its Division of Service to the Armed Forces, for which she eventually served as National Volunteer Consultant. And in recent years, she has become one of the most committed local supporters. When I address her as Mrs. Patton, she says, please call me Joanne. I would love a rousing applause for Joanne Patton. She's coming, keep it going. I'd be prouder to share <laughs> with Candy our membership in the military family. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for you. you and your son. I've got to be personal besides saying good morning, everyone. This is more than a formal and wonderful event as far as I'm concerned. It's a coming together again with, for me, one of the most important organizations in my life, particularly in my military life. Because no matter what you might have read in the program, I did not marry a general. I married a young army captain who was still growing up as I was. But the uh, young Joanne Patton, who came to volunteer for the first time for the American Red Cross in the 1950s, would never have conceived that someday she'd be standing on this stage following distinguished people of so many worlds, and particularly the heroes we've heard from today who stepped up when they were needed. That Joanne and this Joanne are, are truly honored. When I uh, volunteered first, I was given what I thought was 